the greatest secret that has ever existed too. Narrator Benjamin Sampson There are two races. One race is a negotiable instrument, the other is not. Race is a negotiable instrument used to give a framework to one's identity. Race is a type of conceptual box in which one assembles optional factors that collectively tell others who we are. Those who wish to negotiate the terms of their existence adopt a negotiable identity. These negotiators make up one race of humanity. The Bible calls them the people of the flesh, or even the people of the lie. These negotiators are liars, and their identity is formulated on lies and composed of lies. Their identity is not actually who they are. What is in their race box is what they could scam and salvage. There is nothing real or substantial in the box of their race. Their racial structure is what they have negotiated to create their identity with, but by the terms of their existence, this identity is fluid, conditional and subject to alteration. This is more descriptive of a ghost or hallucination. The negotiated identity is not a real thing. Identity cannot be negotiated. We cannot be defined by debate, democracy nor by fiat. No state can mandate who or what we are. Two people who negotiate their identity cannot decide collectively to be, in one case, slave and in the other case, master, even if they act as slave and master what they do is act parts in a bizarre play. The negotiated identity is always superficial, it is always a secondary or artificial identity. Their fundamental nature is that of a negotiated creature, a member of a race that exists through negotiation. Because negotiated identities are negotiated as is the case with all negotiated conditions, this identity can be alienated. The slave could be made free, and the master could be imprisoned. The normal markers of race, such as birth, country and color are alienable. There is no one factor that defines race and all negotiated elements can be eliminated or modified in terms of their degree of significance. Secularists tend to acknowledge this fact when they argue black republicans are not really black persons. Secularists are right about identity being malleable and contingent. It is in their reality. A negotiation must be open to alteration through negotiation if it was not the product of a negotiated settlement. At the same time, Christians as citizens of a different kingdom that is not under the law, are not subject to the law. We do not negotiate who we are. Christians reject the assertion made by those of the flesh, that identity is a negotiable instrument. Our race is residual not manufactured. We are what is left after the negotiated elements have been peeled away. This is what it means to be born again and to live in the spirit. This is a reinvigorating the fundamental elements of who we are. Ultimately, we have an identity given by God. God is the creator. This is not to say we cannot negotiate or manipulate a different identity. What is being said here is that because of what God has done and is doing in our life and because of the nature of reality, only one identity is possible for us and this is the identity that is contained in the reality created by God. There are situations and conditions and agreements humans can make, but they cannot stand if they conflict with the foundational truths of God. We can have likes and dislikes and make choices, but if they do not fit in with the purpose of God, they will not long stand. The doctrine of the lesser magistrate and the doctrine of subsidiarity means all powers not formally delegated to management are reserved, as non-negotiable instruments, to citizens. Citizens are non-negotiable entities, superior to the state and to all delegated authority. Citizens' inalienable rights are non-negotiable instruments. If rights were negotiable, they would not be rights. 
but that is precisely the issue that is in contention. Human rights is the issue being fought over on the front lines of the truckers' revolt. Is identity a negotiable instrument, potentially alienable, or is it not? Is identity a human right and if so, what is identity and what is its source? There are only two possible responses to this question. Depending on which position you choose to support you will be racially distinct from the other group. The foundational argument of liberalism is that mankind is free. This comes down to a belief man is free to negotiate and all positions. No one, they say, can dictate what can or cannot be negotiated. Even to their identity. But this position creates something of a paradox. They can claim to possess rights, they can claim they are the author of their identity. But unless they isolate themselves from all of humanity, how does their view prevail? Confronted by another person with a different opinion, the liberal is required to negotiate reality and truth with them. So, the concept of cultural relativity is embraced. Each person is considered to have personal freedom. You have your safe space and I have mine. Neither one of us will use any word or idea that might traumatize the other. To understand liberalism is to understand the necessity for negotiation. In the mind of liberals those on the right are hateful because they are alienated from debate. Conservatives by being conservatives are defined as people unwilling to compromise and negotiate. Conservatives are naturally less inclined to think everything is on the table. We are not likely to think identity and the nature of marriage are infinitely malleable. In the mind of a liberal this adherence to monogamy and cisgender suggests hate and phobia and a sense of superiority. One cannot take anything off the table, is the liberal negotiator's starting position. That this is a contradiction ought to come as no surprise. All of liberal ideology is founded on contradictory premises. We can understand the liberal position better, if we consider an auction compared to a private sale. In an auction the price is defined by what a buyer wishes to pay. The desire of the seller has no impact. A private sale usually hinges upon what price point the seller has in mind. If our identity is not decided by the state or other overlord and we cannot successfully dictate the terms of our participation, how is our identity established? Logic does not permit negotiation. Logic creates identity by a tautology. Logic is just as non-negotiable as physical reality would be if it existed. Solipsism is invalidated by logic to the degree it is by the narrative of materialism. If I cannot claim to be a trucker if I cannot drive an articulated lorry, then my identity is not negotiable so far as being a trucker is concerned. What a trucker is, has been defined. The concept of a truck driver has predefined parameters. Logic tells me what my identity is because logic leads to only one conclusion. We follow logic, not by negotiation but by faith. People believe in me and I in them. We work together. Who I am defines me but who I am is identified by those who work with me. It is ultimately my faith in God that manifests who I am through my works in faith. By my fruits am I known and my identity revealed. My faith in my church defines who I am for this faith defines the way I work in and through the body of Christ. Not only do I not negotiate my identity with the state I do not negotiate who I am with myself. It is my faith in my church and their faith in me that defines me, a faith that manifests as works of faith, done in faith, for the people of faith. It is my faith that defines my race. I am a believer, a son of God, an adopted brother of Christ, and part of the family of the church defined race. 
My faith is not negotiable nor is my race. I am heir to an identity defined by a non-negotiable faith, in God, in church and in myself.